Hi everyone, and welcome to another A and B Horror Movies video. I'm Aaron. I'm Ben. And today we are very excited to be joined by the talented Lauren Marie Taylor. Lauren Marie, welcome. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Yes, this is awesome. Uh, you may recognize Lauren Marie from Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. She played Vicky, uh, the the infamous brown underwear. Uh, <laughs> I had to mention that. Um, you were also in Neighbors, which is an excellent movie. You played Elaine. You were in Girls Night Out, um, another 80s slasher, which is a, a fun one to check out. And you were on the soap opera Loving for 12 years. I think you said your entire adult life. Yes, I was pregnant with all three children while I was on that soap opera. So I really just, my whole adult life was a soap opera. <laughs> Very cool. Did you have to hide the pregnancy in the, in the scenes? Did they shoot oh. above or? well only for the <laughs> third one because it, when i they wrote in the first two but then the third one they didn't so i if you ever watched love scenes in anything you know a lot of times they'll shoot from different angles well yes. because i was pregnant you know obviously they couldn't have the guy getting all sexy with me on top so i had to be on top and they shot it from behind and because i was a <laughs> super runner I, and i kept running all throughout my pregnancies because i was able to because i was in uh, that kind of condition you yes. couldn't tell I was pregnant from behind so the poor actor who I was on top of I dropped the robe you know and my boobs are like out to here because I'm about to give birth and I'm loaded down oh like you know, with milk you know <laughs> and he just went holy sh like that and, I was like, and I seen action a very pregnant woman yeah it was so <laughs> funny. we couldn't stop laughing we barely got the love scene in it was pretty funny that's amazing um well, and that was a, a question that we didn't even script. It just came to mind. Um, but we do have some questions for you about Friday the 13th Part 2, one of the mm -hmm. best sequels in the franchise. Uh, ben, do you want to ask the first one? Yeah. Um, I was wondering how uh, it came around to be playing the part of Vicky, audition-wise and stuff. Oh, okay. So, yeah, um, the casting director, Meg Simon, she had been casting a lot of TV commercials. And leading up to Friday the 13th part two, which was my first movie, I had done hundreds of commercials. I'm, I kid you not, between starting at the age of 17. So she knew me from commercials. So when the part of Vicky came up, it came out as, you know, the all American girl, girl next door, that type of thing. So of all the girls that auditioned for Vicky, it was her obvious choice was the girl that she knew from all these apple pie type of commercials. So I was very lucky awesome. that I, I didn't have a long audition process and I pretty much booked just, the part like that. Got it, very cool. Um, um, and at the time when you were in the film, did you have any idea that it would have such longevity that the franchise would completely take off from there? Oh, I, not at all, not at all. In fact, our working title was just Jason. It wasn't even called part two. We knew we were doing, you know, the next movie in line from the first movie, but the working title was not Friday the 13th Part 2. It was just called Jason. So even then, we had no idea that this was going to be a franchise. And at that point, there hadn't really been a whole lot of franchises mm -hmm. to begin with. So That's there's true. trilogies and things like that. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. It really kicked off um, lots of movies to come. Yeah. Ben, uh, you're going to jump in. I was going to say, had you, um, had you watched the previous Friday the 13th before? Did you watch it because you was uh, starring in the second one? Yeah, that's a good question, Ben. Um, what they did uh, when we all booked it, whoever was on the East Coast at the time before they flew people in, some people came from the West Coast, like John Fury, and um, I believe Amy came from the West Coast, Kirsten, they, and Russell, they um, brought us all into this director's guild type of place, like a private screening room to watch Friday the 13th, 1980. And I had never seen it before. And I had never, I didn't even see Halloween or anything like that. So I was just like, Ugh! I went home and I, I said to my mother, I said, I think they really kill people because I'd <laughs> never seen any of those actors again because it was the beginning of their careers. But I was really nervous. I, I think they're dead. The and I'm like, shoo, I really hope they don't really kill people. I hope this isn't a snuff film. So I was a little bit worried. <laughs> Did you say goodbye to everyone just in case? Yes. <laughs> Um, awesome. So uh, I guess you must have watched part two countless times at this point, right? Does it, I know you've had some live screenings recently. What is it like watching um, the film from 
I think 40 years ago now. Um, what is it like watching it even now with an audience? Do you still um, get a kick out of it? Yeah, it's fun. Um, last year, or the year before, I did um, um, a theater called Johnstown Theater, which is in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the drive-in, which was also fun. But it, when you're in a movie theater theater, you can really hear the audience's reactions. So what I like to do is I like to sit in the back and do sort of a running, just off-the-cuff commentary, like, don't do it, don't go in there, you stupid, you know, things like that <laughs> to get the audience going. But it's always weird because there are two reactions when Vicky dies. There's either dead silence because they don't, the audience is like, she's in the room or they applaud. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, it is weird, but it, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's fun because you do, I always do a and a when I do those types of things. Oh, and I, very cool. Yeah, they like yes. that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're go ahead, Ben. All right, go on, Aaron. No, it's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's funny you said it because you said, oh, they chose like um, the all American girl, like the apple pie girl. When when you get killed, it, I was like, oh, she was nice. <laughs> Compared to like everybody else, like, you seemed like a really nice. And it was, um, actually, just quite. It was sad. Good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and, and it's probably one of the most, I would say, the most profound kill in the movie. Um, kind of lingers and stays with you. So nice, nice yeah. job. Thank you. Yeah, it takes a while. It takes yeah, a while yeah, yeah. to kill her. I mean, not that she's running or anything like that. A lot of people say, well, how come Vicky didn't run from the room? I said, first of all, doors closed behind her. Yeah, yeah. there's all, nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And then she sees a friend of hers hanging out, literally hanging behind her, soaked with blood. So yeah, exactly. I think it's completely believable. And I, I think you nailed it. Um, other than part two, what is your favorite Friday the 13th movie? Part six. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed part, part six. I saw it, at, saw it at a drive-in, of course, and Tommy McLaughlin was in the audience. I have a story about him, too. Uh, he was in the audience, and that was kind of fun, you know, to be hanging out with them, because we didn't sit in our cars. We sat outside and watched it all together. Everybody else was oh, in the cars. That's cool. And that was fun. It was, it's a fun movie. And, you know, God love the Alice Cooper yes song yeah. yeah the alice cooper song the whole yeah. rv scene with uh darcy demos yeah. i think yes darcy demos yeah um and it's the only one with campers in the whole series yeah all the other cool. movies only i mean not that it really matters but all the other movies only have the counselors yeah ben what do you have um yeah so um also there's uh you see a few locations in the movie there's the the bar um then you've got the camp in the woods where you are and there's there's um like the town at the start when the trucks towed away was that really close together and was there any sets made for in like a studio for the film or was it all filmed basically on location yeah it was all on location so the uh the bar was actually a honky tonk bar not far from the camp you know maybe 10 minute car ride the town cool. was also right there we filmed at the camp, I mean, there were two camps very close to each other. So we stayed in the cabins at the top of the hill, and then you walk down the hill a little bit, and then there's the camp where we filmed with the Packenack Lodge and the lake and everything like that. So it was all right there. And, you know, they built, I mean, they built things like um, the breakaway glass and whatnot, but it was still done at the camp. So it really had that gritty outside. It's really getting chilly out crickets really had that that feeling so what what you feel in the movie in terms of it being outside and in camp it's totally real in the woods right yeah and, and you feel that right when you're watching you the film yeah um well uh we could talk about friday the 13th part two forever however we thought it would be fun to share some of our favorite camping movies so we we're thinking not only just sleepaway camp cabin in the woods uh tent camping uh, we each picked our three favorite films, or our top favorite films, maybe. Um, Lauren Marie, why don't we start with you? What was your first pick? Okay, well, I would go to mm -hmm. horror movie fandom hell if I did not mention Sleepaway Camp. Oh, yes, of course. Okay, you got my girl, <laughs> Felissa Rose. You got my girl, Catherine Kami. And, mm -hmm. you know, it just has this the same horror movie trope that Friday the 13th has, which is sexy time equals death time. Yes. Yeah. A little bit <laughs> of a surprise at the end of that one. 
That's another thing that I loved about it because I had <laughs> saw it in a drive-in. There's another one. I'd never seen Sleepaway Camp until I went to this drive-in theater in Pennsylvania called The Mahoning. So, you know, I'm watching it and I'm going, okay, first of all, I'd never been to a summer camp in my life. So uh -huh. the whole beginning of it, it really felt like you were at camp. Mm. And then shit starts to hit the fan and you think, oh my God, thank God I didn't go to Sleepaway Camp. You know, this is, ugh. and then again, that ending, it's like, drop the mic right yes yeah it certainly stays with you um i was i did go to sleepaway camp and i was a counselor for five summers um but nothing like that ever happened it was mostly mostly a good time okay and yeah. i was gonna say you're lucky to be alive yes yeah, yeah. true you still got a shirt <laughs> oh yeah like even says counselor <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> i wore it to the mall today and i got some strange looks i'm like maybe i'm too old to be wearing this shirt <laughs> Out in public <laughs> I, know, I wear mine all the time so yeah okay there you go Ben why don't you go next what'd you pick um I picked the burning oh, oh uh, yeah the garden shears yeah uh iconic scene um it's just it's a really good film um I watched it probably when I shouldn't have and um it was just kind of um it was unbelievable, really, because uh, I'd, I'd watched them throw out the thirteenth, and I was like, "These kills are, are bad." And then I'd watch the burning, and it sort of—I don't have to say—took mm. it up a level. But I was just really surprised with it, and yeah, it's, ever since that's I've a kind good of, um, yeah, enough that and the whole camping sort of and the lake. I love the camping and the the cabins and the lake right next the to lake. each other. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just got such a good. Friday the thirteenth feel to mm -hmm. it, and um, yeah, and that's one movie that unfortunately we never got a sequel to. I think they could have done a, I forget the killer's name, but I think they could have continued him on. Oh yeah, and he could have become a horror icon, but yeah, I don't know. Opportunity missed. Um, yeah, they, they did not have a sequel. Nope. So I uh, switched it up a little bit, and the first one I'm going with is actually I have the steel book Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Um, you always have the most obscure movies. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I try. This is one of the best horror comedies out there. Lauren Marie, if you haven't seen it, watch it. You will laugh hysterically. These two guys, they they buy this like, have you seen it? I should ask you that. No, I, so they buy this. I'm like, it? Ben, you've seen it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these two guys, they're kind of like hillbillies i guess and they're presented that way they buy this cabin in the woods and they're going to go fix it up um, and these college kids go they're on a camping trip and they think the hillbilly guys are trying to kill them um but they're not but there's like this one scene where the girl falls and hits her head and they're like we got your friend but they're like we've got your friend she's right here and all the all the friends are like run they're gonna kill us and they run away <laughs> but anyway i'm not doing a great job describing it very funny film um so i'm going with that one first to try to uh Pick something unexpected. Good choice. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, what about you, Lauren Marie? You're next, back to you, number two. Okay, back to me. Okay, um, I really went all summer camp out with my uh, with my three picks because, you know, I, I was debating, you know, was Fantasy Island a summer camp movie? No, it's a vacation movie. You mm -hmm. know, so, you know, Midsummer? No, that's kind of like creepy old people movie. So I had to go with a movie called Summer Camp and it's from 2015. Oh. Yeah, Ooh. American counselors go to Spain. It's got all the ingredients that I like in a horror movie. You've got the creepy old manor house, right? Yep. You've got um, that, you know, bummy looking creepy old guy or he looks old, you know, peering around and doing things like going into underwear drawers. You've got um, the <laughs> cam work, of course, which we love in horror movies. The yes. whole come from behind, go around corners, do it in the mirror, that type of thing. And you've got a mysterious virus. You don't know where it's coming from. And then you've got a border collie. Gotta love a movie with a border collie. My favorite breed. Of course, yes. <laughs> so yeah, it, it has kind That's of, you have seen it, it has kind of a um, 28 Days Later vibe to it. Ooh, oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to get a copy. Summer Camp, 2015? 2015, it's called Summer Camp, yeah. I've never seen it. Oh, One of you? I've never even heard um, of it. I'm so making wow. a note of it right now. Oh, I feel I, so uh, honored that you've never heard of it. My gosh. I'll check it out. Isn't there, I thought there was a summer camp movie in the 80s, but 
Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, I'm definitely going to check it out. Very cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, Back to you, Ben. Yeah. Um, for campers, I've gone with the Blair Witch Project. Oh my God! Of course. So, um, Coffin Rock. Tell me where you are, Josh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's song. just so okay now, isn't it? Um, uh, yeah, it's just it's camping. It's it's scary. Um, it sort of brung the found footage into the big sort of screen, didn't it? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it launched, launched, launched so course. many other movies. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I uh, still remember seeing that for the first time in the theater in that very ending, right? The last five yeah. minutes is just terrifying. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's so good because it leaves more for you to sort of imagine about and leaves, every, well, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. best thing with film is imagination, really, isn't it? So if you're left to that yourself, then you can imagine something more scary than. So yeah, I thought it was Absolutely. good. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And it's what you don't see, and you don't see the witch in that one, exactly, which I think yeah. is the what makes it brilliant. The second one, let's not talk about that. But the third <laughs> one was similar to the first one, um, but you almost see too much, I think. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, I picked uh, an '80s film, Madman. <laughs> I love that cover. Isn't that cool, <laughs> really. Look at the back. Oh. Cool. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, very cheesy and campy. Um, and this is at a sleepaway camp, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. There's this one hot tub scene that I don't even know how to describe it. They just kind of spin around and look at each other <laughs> in like a sensual way. It's very odd, um, but also kind of works. Uh, anyway, Madman, Madman Carruthers is my pick for the next one. Creepy. Creepy. If you haven't hey. seen it, um, check it out. Definitely have not seen it. I don't know what year, maybe 82? It is 80s, is, 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 isn't it? Uh, 81. Oh, okay. Same so year. Uh, yeah. Friday the 13th, part two. Okay, maybe that's why I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lauren Marie, what do you got? Are we oh, on our, okay, we're on our last, third, right? Third Your last one. one. Okay. Another, again, 2014, there's something around that, that those years that I like. Um, oh, God. It's a movie called Stage Fright. It's not like the old movie Stage Fright. This is a um, very um, summer camp, like high school musical meets Jason Voorhees type of uh, type of thing. Um, and I can say this because I have done musical theater a lot. I was a director of a musical theater group. And I can tell you, annoying musical theater campers. This is when I channel my inner Pamela Voorhees and I just say, kill them, kill them all because they're so <laughs> annoying. You know, um, and again, funny. you have your crazy older guy lurking again, typical. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of fun. It takes a while. It's got a lot of musical numbers that are annoying and you're just like, when are we going to see a little bit more horror? Because it starts with horror. It starts with a kill. Then you don't see anything until towards really? the end of the movie. And then it's like, it's all on. It's just like die, 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 die. Oh, I, I actually watched that the other week. Oh, you did? What do you really? think? Yeah, it's 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 okay actually. I, I get what you're saying um, about the musical numbers. I kind of turned it down sometimes to, yeah. until it's yeah. It was it was good. It was really entertaining actually, and I was surprised how different it was from the original. So it was good to see something different. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. And also, you know, it's got it's got meatloaf. When I was yeah. doing Nate, I went to a Meatloaf concert with John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. Yes. Um, it's got wow. Dan Levy from Schitt's Creek when he was really young. He plays the um, entertainment reporter at the end. And of course, there's that scene, and you'll remember this, uh, Ben, where it's an homage to Carrie, to the prom scene in Carrie. I think I, so, yeah. I, I don't want to say it out loud. I'll tell you off camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're recording. <laughs> it involves a paint can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Okay. <laughs> it's actually really good. You should check it out, Aaron. I need to see it. I own it. Isn't that sad? And I haven't watched it. Um, I need to check it out. There's nothing like a musical horror movie, right? Definitely. Like Phantom of the Paradise, Rocky Horror. Yes. Um, I don't know if it compares. Uh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> but still fun. I will check it out. Ben, what do you got? What's your last? Um, it's not 
campers, but it kind of is. Um, it's a cabin. I've gone for Evil Dead 2. Ah, uh, yes. I, I just love that film. It's mm-hmm. brilliant. I love the first one, but I think this one, um, I know it's basically a lot of people say it's the same film, but redone, but it's, it's just super fun. Um, it is scary. It's funny. And Bruce Campbell's an absolute legend. So, um, yes. yeah. Uh, perfect choice. I, I kind of thought you'd go with that, so I went with something else, uh, but also Cabin in the Woods, because Cabin in the Woods. Can you please explain that to me? I, I, I was... This I, movie? <laughs> it's so much fun, but I just didn't get the whole thing with the people orchestrating, and then... I, please explain it to me. It was, really it was sort of like they have to make sacrifices to the gods so they don't wreak havoc on the world. And, but there's like certain rules they have to follow. So they have to set up these scenarios in a certain amount of, I'm just giving away the entire film. There's <laughs> certain, I think most people have seen it, certain um, rules they have to follow and a certain amount of people have to die in a certain order. Ben, does that sound right? Yeah. And that's, it, go yeah. ahead. No, and it's just, um, it's, it's basically what you said. You have, it's all to do with sacrifices and stuff. And um, I think it's just, they have to use these certain scenarios and use a certain, mythical creature basically to say to to do it don't they i think to, if that's right sacrifice them right yeah yeah i think and every right, yeah. every object in the house has got a link to a certain creature i believe it picks that certain yeah whatever they choose and i think they chose like the zombie family or something yeah, um, yeah. and then something goes awry is that right i think they start figuring yes. out because the, 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 pheromones, the pheromones that they put out the guy who's stoned He's so yeah, stoned that the pheromones yeah. don't work on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I need to rewatch. I have the steel book, but I couldn't find it ahead of time. So. Oh yeah, you, you have to watch it. I watched it recently and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to speak of it because I was just so confused. It was, mm. I, I, was I don't know, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it is legal in New York and I do get mis- medicinal. So anyway, but I don't. Massachusetts yeah. too, yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, yes, of course it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I figured, you know what, if you speak of it, I'm going to have to ask you about it because I was so confused. But everybody, it, you definitely see it, everybody. It's a fun It's line. so good. And Sigourney Weaver showing up in the end, who I yeah. had no idea that was going to come. Um, but I will say, the second time, I had to watch it twice to actually understand what was going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, it's kind of... It's very clever. It's a clever take on the Cabin in the Woods um, formula right yes totally all right well that was fun let's uh i don't think i mentioned this but lauren marie we have viewer questions from actually six viewers um we've narrowed it down to two questions each and some of them are pretty easy uh i mean they're all they're all fun and easy no no stress here um ben do you want to go with the first one or do you want me to um i'm gonna get this out of the way because i don't know how to say his name (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> go ahead this is, uh this is by phil matokadrick i'm gonna say oh it might be film matt okadrick sorry um if i got that name wrong um but he's asked uh here we go what is your favorite scene from the movie that's his first question so i won't answer the second one <laughs> Okay, so the, my favorite scene is the campfire scene because I think I mentioned earlier that I've never been to sleepaway camp or any camp whatsoever. Being a city girl is just something we didn't do back then. And so it's the campfire scene because I've never done a campfire before. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, is, it, is, there, ask the is there another question from him? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, it was, uh, how was Walt Gorney? off camera what was it like working with him off camera oh, did you Walt, mean? I actually have a fun picture I think I posted it on on Instagram he was very nice he was very funny he hung out with all of us uh really took a shining to Bill Randolph and Marta Kober uh throughout nice. but he was cool I mean it was so funny to have him be so lighthearted. yet there he is you know being warning everybody the character You're do crazy so Ralph well. for those watching crazy Ralph. that's crazy yes. Ralph yeah. yes yeah. it was so sad when he died in part two that hurt Still hurts. Yeah, they, yeah. They could have continued on with him. Yeah. Um, let's see. Over to me. So the these questions are from Mike Freeman seventy seven. He said, uh, "How did you think the sequel compared to the original?" 
Oh, wow. You know what? Probably because you know, Steve Miner was involved with the original. I think that um, it did it well. It, it, um, it didn't go against it. It didn't try to be something that part one wasn't. It really mm -hmm. stayed loyal to the formula of the first one. So I think it respected uh, part one, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Um, let's see. What kind of direction did you get from Steve Miner? <laughs> Besides <laughs> saying, oh, Lauren, just put on the brown undies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, Steve, why, why am I going upstairs? Mark is in a wheelchair. Lauren, just go up the stairs. Uh, he was very, uh, a very, yeah. He I, was never, very I never thought yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah you I know, right? What's your line? Is anybody still here? Which is one yeah, of the best right? lines in the book. Well, Go ahead. Yeah, uh, but no, he was a very focused director. You know, we had a budget and he was definitely getting it done. He wasn't like jokey, jokey around. He was friendly, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but he wasn't like hardy, hard, hard, let's, you know, playing jokes on set. They didn't, they didn't do that. You didn't yeah. do that. Okay. And, and actually, um, Ben, Mike had three questions. So I'm just going to do this one because it's a good one, I think. What's your method for a really good blood curdling scream? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, okay, so my brother is a year older than I am, right? And he used to grew up across the street from the cemetery, okay? That's two, two strikes against me right there. Big brother mm -hmm. growing up across the street from the cemetery in the projects and in the Bronx. Three strikes, I'm dead. And he used to come and he would just scare me. If I was in the playground, he would hide behind something and just, ah, and scare me. So I started screaming at a very early age. So it was not a problem to scream in these horror movies. That's awesome. It came naturally. Yeah, life was a horror movie for me growing <laughs> up with my brother. <laughs> very cool. All right, Ben, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you for some of the other questions. This is from uh, Cheers Up Cinema. And he's at, he said, since I am a beer connoisseur, do you like beer, wine, or liquor more? Ah, ah. question. <laughs> oh boy, let's see. At Christmas time, I like hot toddies with rum, mm -hmm. but I'm a real cliche. I'm an American housewife cliche. I like my dry Chardonnay. Yeah. But oh, wait a minute. I do like, hold it. I, um, let's see. I haven't had any of it yet, but I did bring it upstairs with me because it is Saturday. I do like um, hard cider. Oh, wow. I do too. Yeah, I do like a hard cider. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, well, where I live, there are a lot of um, cider places, um, you know, around us. And yes. we have a friend who's in the bluegrass band, and he plays at a lot of these uh, breweries. So I've gotten to uh, get a taste. That's of so that. cool. Oh, my yeah. God, we should have done our alcohol intro. Usually we talk about what we're drinking, but we try not to, oh, we try not we to push it on our, our guests. But thank you for sharing. You're welcome. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. I think you got one more, right, from him? Uh, his second question is, other than Friday the 13th, part two, huh. what is your favorite slasher? Okay. Um, see, I don't know if this counts as a slasher. I I, I love 28 Days Later. You know, I guess, you know, they're gnashing with their teeth, so it's close. 28 Days Later, I love, but Such I think- a great film. Isn't it great? Mm -hmm. yes. You know, you're switching channels. If that's on, I'm watching it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I love that movie. The and, screenplay um, is awesome too. Yeah. I read the screenplay before I saw the movie in the theater and I was so excited and they didn't change a lot. It's basically what the screenplay is. Yeah. It's awesome. Awesome film. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. I actually, um, yeah, yeah, sure. I remember totally. my work takes me into um, London and stuff and there was some bits being filmed around about that time. And I remember the, um, uh, the, the streets and the roads being blocked off because they were still picking stuff up because they had to film it so early in the morning to make sure there was nobody walking around to make yeah. it look like there was... Um, yeah, and then obviously all the stuff was being moved as the traffic was... So we had a few traffic jams. Oh, the That's cool, though. Yeah, 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 to, be, yeah. to get yeah. stuck yeah. in traffic for that. I, yeah, that yeah. was cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, back to me. Uh, actually, this here, which one did I do next? Uh, okay, so this is from clever ghost horror underscore 90.30, uh, Chris Cullen. He said, okay. what, what is your favorite memory on set and what was the most challenging scene to film? Oh, I, didn't we already do that one? I did I did. ask that one already? Um, yeah. I don't think so. You sure? 
My favorite memory <laughs> was doing the campfire. Did we do that? Oh, I think the guests. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I think our viewers. Did yeah. you ask that one? I think it's, it, it's yeah. just the same question. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, let me, I've got one. Well, thank you, Chris, for sending that question in. The next one yeah, is. Thank you, Chris. Sorry. Um, I, yeah, I, I mean, just to recap quickly, it was the campfire scene was my favorite one to film and the most excruciating. Um, one was the brown undie scene. I have to do that, yes. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> well, maybe not, but I understand. <laughs> um, all right, well, let me go to the next one then. Oh, Ben, why don't we go back to you? Because I've got one more question. Okay. One more um, question. Well, I'm going to have to probably need your help with this one as well, because I, I can't, uh, I forgot how to pronounce his name. It is Jace Marci. How do we say uh, On Jace underscore Marsiglia. Okay. Okay. I think. Sorry, Jace. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> If a um, if a good role came your way, would you return to acting full time? Oh wow! Oh, another good. You guys have good questions here. Um, um, yeah, actually, I would. And little tidbit, little secret. Um, I did film a movie last year in Canada, and wow. it is a horror movie. It's a feature film. It's full length horror movie. It should be out sometime this year. And very I played cool. this very mysterious older woman at the end. I won't say what she does, but she does something integral to the survivor, to the survival of someone. And this uh, woman that I play with knows way too much about hunting and blood. Oh, I can't oh, wait. I know. So, yes. <laughs> We're so. <laughs> yeah, we're sold. So stay tuned for that. And, and maybe yeah. when it comes out, we'll have you on again to talk about the movie. Yeah, because then I'll be able to talk about it because I did sign a non-disclosure. So I can't really talk about it. Oh, but of course. Yes. It's a nice we... juicy, juicy tidbit. Not, it's not even a small role. It's, I had like four pages of, of a monologue. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like in uh, Pearl. Have you seen Pearl? Her monologue at the end? No. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> um, well, We'll definitely no. check that out. Can't wait. Oh, Do you have another one? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Back to you, Ben. Sorry. Um, um, it's quite a good question, actually. Uh, he said, how are you enjoying the convention circuit? Ah, I love it. It's, it's really so enjoyable to meet so many people. I mean, the horror, people who love horror are really some of the most tremendous people. Uh, their knowledge base is incredible. Their the stuff that they have. I mean, you can see a lot of stuff in my office here, but the stuff that they have, vintage posters, uh, bobbleheads, everything, and their knowledge is huge. So I've really been enjoying that and learning from everybody. And then the photo ops that we've been doing are so much fun getting to travel, you know, mostly for me, I'm on the East Coast, but then being able to travel to London last year was just a grand time, cool. just fantastic in Germany also. And then, like I said, when we were talking off camera, the neighbors fans come out of the woodwork, the girls night out fans, loving fans. It's, yeah. it's, really, it's really cool to be able to, you know, be a part of all of that. So I really enjoy it. Thank you for that. That's, that's so awesome. And there's a really nice edition of Girls Night Out that just came out in the past year, which I think is probably getting even more fans of the film. Yeah. Um, was it yeah. Vinegar Syndrome, I think? Um, I believe or it was seven. Right. I should, I should know this. Or is it Arrow? It is, it is an Arrow edition. It is Arrow. Yes, it's Arrow edition. I'm so wrong. Um, Does it have the color boxes on the bottom? Yeah, that one. Yes, that's the Arrow edition. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Awesome. Am I wearing the ugly sweater in this? No, I'm wearing another purple top, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so back to me. Uh, this is from a married couple, Simhoff32. Oh. And Tim Hoff, 49. Uh, what was it like working with Warrington Gillette and Steve Daskowitz as Jason? Yeah, Steve Dash for short. Um, oh, well, Steve Dash, okay. okay. Well, Warrington would kill me if I didn't say how wonderful it was to work with him. And it was though, because Warrington and I were, were friendly. Um, and well, you see it back here, I have uh, the black and white photo of him getting his makeup put on. So he hung around the set oh, cool. even on days he wasn't working. Yeah, it's cool. Um, you have to zoom in on it. Um, and um, with Steve, I actually didn't work with Steve a whole lot. We got to know each other on the convention circuit, which I have another picture of back there. And he was <laughs> always great. He was a lot of fun. But my Jason was actually a crew guy by the name of Jerry Wallace. He's the one who popped up in the bed and he's also the one who dragged me down the stairs. 
So uh, it wasn't it wasn't Steve and it was not Warrington. Isn't that funny? That is funny. Yeah, yeah. Some good uh, tidbits there. Mm -hmm. um, very cool. So this question actually I think is a lot of fun. Um, besides yourself, what celebrity would you like to play your character if there was a remake? My heart just skipped a beat. That's a good question. I never really thought about that. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to go with my, another girl who I love. Girl. I say girl, but I can say it because I'm a girl. I identify as a girl. Another woman. Her name is mm -hmm. Parker Posey. Okay. Oh, She's yeah. one of my favorite movies, Best in Show. She does all those <sighs> fun Christopher Guest mockumentaries. She does a lot of those and I just love her. And I think that she would um, she would bring a lot of sass to Vicky that I didn't portray her as. I think she would turn Vicky around and give her more sass. I think she'd make, make Vicky more of a smart ass and I can just see her rolling her eyes. You know, like <laughs> yes. Jason pops out of bed and I can see Parker right. at point. You know, rolling her eyes and going, oh, come on. <laughs> or saying, does this look like a busy bee to you? Yes! <laughs> I love that you movie. obviously don't know my dog. <laughs> Such That's a funny so movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I think people who say they don't like Scream 3, I think Parker Posey made it a great movie. She's so funny in that film. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I love her too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great choice. Yeah, thanks. Great question. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Simhoff thirty two and Timhoff forty nine. Ben, you asked all yours, right? I think we did. Yeah, oh, I have a, I have a question actually, um, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll ask it just as because they've been asking these the, the viewers. Um, if you was given a chance now, and somebody said to you, um, "We're bringing these franchises back," would you like to star in a, a Halloween or a Nightmare on Elm Street? Which one would you choose? Oh my gosh. Well, would Jamie Lee Curtis be on the, in the Halloween movie with me? Sure. Yeah, well. Okay, we could be, <laughs> uh, we would be a uh, crazy old lady neighbors. I would be the cat lady and she would be the lady who protects the whole neighborhood. Awesome. But yeah, sure, I'd do it. I just would want to be a crazy old cat lady, like Crazy Ralph. I'd want to be the female version of Crazy Ralph. <laughs> Cue the Halloween music. Um, Awesome. I know we're going a little bit long here, but I did want to fit in awesome. some more trivia, uh, if we can. Um, I've got some slasher questions. Let's see. Are you guys ready? Uh, no, I'm not ready, but... You're not ready. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ben can help me out with this. Yes, let's see. I think Ben might be frozen. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> At least he's smiling. Yeah, it's a good headshot for him. Um, we should take a screenshot of him and have him autograph it for us. We could, yeah, that's good. He's wearing, a, you can't tell, but his pixel shirt has Jason Voorhees on it. Oh, I yes, think, I see it. <laughs> I think he's coming back. Um, ben, I want you to hear the trivia question. <laughs> I love it. Now that I have my glasses on, I can really see it. You gotta love uh, technology, right? Yeah, I've got my uh, uh, Coffee and Horror Movies t-shirt on. Oh, very cool. <laughs> You're back. Oh, there he is. Back. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, I think Ben's frozen. <laughs> I was just talking and nobody was answering. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do trivia. I don't know if you could I don't know if you could hear us. Oh, here we go. Uh let's see. What does the killer keep asking? I'm doing slasher trivia questions. Uh, what does the killer keep asking when he phones the babysitter in when a stranger calls in 1979? Carol Kane was in that one. Not is it safe? That's um, that's Laurence Olivier in Marathon Man. Yes. No. No, that's not it. <laughs> and you know, is it? Have you checked the children? It is. Ooh. Is it? Yeah, you got it right. Look at wow. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do a couple more. Uh, I think I need reading glasses. What actor did, oh, here's a multiple choice one. What actor did not return for the sequel to Silence of the Lambs in Hannibal, Anthony Hopkins or Jodie Foster? Jodie Foster. Yes, let's see, giveaway. I told you some would be easy. Because um, <laughs> Julianne Moore played Clarice Starling. Uh, we'll do a couple more. Let's see, what is the actual name of the motel in Motel Hell from 1980? Then I I like that film as well. It's Motel Hello because the O 
and the oh, light up sign you. drops off. <laughs> okay, oh. two, two, two more of them, we'll call it. Um, well, that's kind of hard. Here we go. In what Halloween <laughs> film does the antagonist Michael Myers not appear? Oh, I know this. You do oh, know shit. what? Sorry, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Give us a hint. What 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 number was it? It's <laughs> 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 part three, season of the witch. You know, with the masks, the Happy Halloween movie oh. with um. Oh my god, I can't think of the actor's name. What's his name? Uh, here's a night Tim of the Simmons. Night of the night. Of the yeah. Thrill me. He says, um, what is it? I got good news and bad news. Your dates are here. The bad news is they're dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more, and then we will uh, yeah. wrap up. Oh, this was kind of fun. Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins, yes. There you go. Um, let's see. Which Melrose Place star played a good and evil twin in the slasher film The Initiation in 1984? Oh, Mel I used to know this. Melrose Place. Um, uh, oh, oh, it begins with a D. Uh, I don't think I've seen it. I don't know. I think I've seen it. Um, well, it's Daphne Zuniga. Uh, Zuniga. Zuniga, right? Is that that's how you say it, right? Is it? I think so. Oh, here we go. Let's <laughs> end with this one. This is a fun one. What does Eric cause to drop at the opera house, killing a spectator in the Phantom of the Opera? Chandelier. Yes. See, see, I told you I grabbed some easy ones. I only knew two, though. <laughs> I knew the other one, but I couldn't figure it out. And the Atkins guy, I should it's, have known that. It's from um, the horror trivial pursuit game. That's is that, cool. is that awesome? Yeah, it's fun. It's got all yeah. kinds of really cool characters and everything. Um, I'm well, have to pick that up before the chat. Next yeah, time. you should. It, it's it, some of the questions are really hard and obscure, but some are fun and easy. So I do screen them a little bit. Um, otherwise, we'd be we, no one would know any other questions. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? So, uh, well, thank you, Lauren Marie, for coming on. This has been amazing. Can you um, let us know how people can find you on social media and tell us a little bit? About, uh, tell us a little bit about any conventions you have coming up where people can come out and meet you. Oh, okay, yeah. Social media, everybody. Um, I'm just my name, Lauren Marie Taylor, one with the number one behind my name. I'm still trying to figure out Facebook. Every time I post to Facebook, it goes on someone else's timeline. So, uh, pardon me for being lame with that. But if you go to my website, it's just <laughs> laurenmarietaylor.com. And I usually post that are going on. But I'll be at the camp at Crystal Lake Camp the first weekend in June with some of the people from part one and part two. That's right. Thank you for representing with the shirt. <laughs> and then um, it hasn't been announced yet, but I'm not sure when this is coming out. But I will likely be in the Buffalo area for Nickel City Con. Um, but it hasn't oh, been announced cool. yet, so it's all set in stone. Once it's set in stone, you know, then I'll put it on the website. That's a cool, it's a cool con. There are a lot of uh, pop culture people there and the really hot sons of anarchy guys are going to be there too. Oh, very nice. So if you're watching, make sure to attend. And also your podcast, Not the Final Girl podcast on yes, Spotify and all. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that. It's been on a bit of a hiatus um, right now. Uh, but I'm hoping to get it uh, kickstarting it again uh, this this month, actually. Ah, very uh, yeah. cool. If there's well, anything you, we can do to support. Yeah, this has been great. If there's anything we can do to support you, just let us know. This has been amazing. Uh, you guys you so have much. been great. Hopefully we can meet in person. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I hope so, too. Yeah, yeah. that would be really awesome. Thanks, yes. guys. Thanks so much. It's been a lot of fun this afternoon yeah. to do this. Agreed, agreed. Um, so if you are watching and there's anything you would like us to cover in a future video, um, just add a comment and we will consider it. Yep, go over to Instagram, follow us over there at a and Horror Movies. And if you are passing and find this video, subscribe, hit the like because it helps us. And uh, cheers for watching. And thank you to Laura Marie. Yes, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye, everyone. <laughs>